ان الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ربي شو لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته how are you brother doing assalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh we are waiting for brother ahmed to join and he delayed us so he's going to be penalty for him so when we meet him inshallah he has to buy everyone ice cream <laughs> inshallah inshallah just okay so sorry what are you just saying let, just let everything be in open and then if i'm okay with this one <laughs> inshallah inshallah okay mashallah okay so uh guys today's um today's topic is a bit different so we decided to change our shift from uh from the series that we were doing because uh you know everyone's wondering because of the the incidents that happened in america the devastating situation that they're going through is uh because of uh the killing of one of the african american brothers by the name of george floyd uh you can see him behind me <laughs> he's there and uh, we're going to dedicate this episode for him especially and we're going to talk about why these things happen um you know across the world because a lot of the times people have this uh misconceptions that there no 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 there is no racism you know it's a misconception and it's not it's something else it's not racism and people are, are in denial of uh of uh acknowledging the fact that there is racism throughout the world it's not uh, limited to uh, america or you know any other country so we're going to be speaking about the root causes of what uh leads up to, uh, leads to uh racism and you know th- this type of discrimination that uh that leads to these kind of incidents that happen in america one of the examples and not only this many things many incidents have happened uh, in the past where people have been you know um, killed unjustly and later they were found out to be unarmed or whatever like they they case there were cases where uh they were you know actually murdered and killed and uh, police said that they were res- resisting or they were they were armed or, or they did it to for self defense but everything it turned out to be untrue and the reason why they were killed were basically uh, uh you know because of the color of their skin so we want to you know um go into this uh, and clarify this dilemma or the confusion that people have of why this actually happening and people sometimes have the wrong solutions for things first of all they have problems acknowledging and then when they recognize that there is a problem that they they find uh, how to rectify it and they they're coming up with all kind of situations and solutions which are not actually practical so we're going to speak about that as well so uh, brother ali i want to start with you um, what what would you think and what would you suggest the root cause of the problem is for racism like people thinking about uh, you know thinking in a way that he's he's of a darker skin so he's different and i'm from a lighter skin so i'm different so what does it all uh, you know where does it all uh, um, you know uh, come up from and how do we uh, approach this problem okay bismillah arrahman arrahim alhamdulillah wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah um, all praise is due to allah we start with his name and we send peace and salutations upon our prophet muhammad ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam um so i mean um, racism and race um you know it's a it's a very sensitive topic to be honest in um, in in today's climate um uh, especially if you look at the situation uh, that we are currently seeing in uh, in the united states um you know we have now seen uh, at the backdrop of uh, this incident that happened to uh george floyd you know how a whole world has uh, kind of showed uh, in one form and, uh, or another uh its uh, mm-hmm. uh, opposition to the racist ideology yes, but yes. at the same time you know this incident has also exposed um you know something that was hidden some 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 racist sentiments that people had hidden they have kind yes. of come at the front you know so you know the, the the incidents like this kind of always play its their part in kind of you know separating the ones um that kind of hide behind some kind of veil and uh, those who are kind of uh, more open and supportive of uh, uh, you know eradicating this menace from our society 
Um, but looking at, uh, you know, racism itself, um, you know, throughout the history, I mean, if you look at racism, racism, basically, what you'd say is, um, you know, uh, a person who is a racist, you know, they kind of subscribe to an ideology, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a system, or it's a thinking, it's a thought process, or an ideology, or they follow some kind of belief. Um, and, and in that belief system, there is um, an, an indication or there's a belief of some sort of superiority of that particular individual over the others. Now, I mean, in the history, you know, it, it used to be the case where, um, you know, a force that came to conquer a land and they conquered that land and they were going to rule over them, that they always looked down upon the people they conquered. Now, yes. uh, from, from their perspective, they saw themselves as superior um, in the sense that, you know, they were able to overcome this uh, particular people, these particular people. And, uh, you know, they would um, probably kind of say that this is because of their superior, uh, you know, race or genetics or things like that. Uh, and more recently, in the more recent history, this has kind of taken a, a, a turn uh, where, you know, people have seen their uh, skin color to be superior over the other skin color. And the most uh, you know, obvious example is of, um, you know, where people of white skin color, you know, kind of prescribe that, you know, their skin color kind of enables them to be superior over skin colors of, you know, other people. So that's that, that's in, in, a, in a nutshell what what um, you know uh, racism is and what racist uh, belief tends to be in, in, in today's society. Um, and uh, did did you have a question there? I think I kind of lost track of the original point. No, that's yeah. No, that's uh, that's where we were trying to get like what are the root causes, and you you uh, you uh, elaborated very very uh, very uh, you know uh, rightly that. Uh, it, it comes from the fact that, um, you know, uh, that people are thinking that they're better of themselves, yeah. better than the other uh, people with the, with the, with the, with the darker skin yeah. or, 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 you know, sometimes it's not even that sometimes it's reverse as well. Sometimes the people with darker skin are racist towards the people of lighter skin. Yeah. They say that, you know, they, these are, uh, um, these are the people who are not, uh, I don't know what the words, what, what's the word it's, they are not, they are really, um, um, you know, like fruits when they're not fully grown, they say we are the fully grown ones, and they are they are still growing. So they're lighter skin. And when they're full grown, they're full grown, and they you know they'll have a they, they have a skin like ours as well. Actually, Brother Muhammad, just, just Brother Muhammad, what would your take be on this? Like, what is the root cause of uh, of this mentality of having people thinking that they're better than others um, and discrimination uh, for the for the color of their skin? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We always start in the name of Allah, uh, the, the, the most merciful and especially merciful. And we praise and we, we praise him over the gifts that he gave us and the proportion that he created us for. And we send salutations to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one of the fundamental gifts that we have is actually we have different colors. And something that we have to be really cherishing it. And, and now that became stigmatized to human beings. Uh, unfortunately, of course, it, it, it goes deeper than just, uh, you know, as Allah says in the Quran, I created you in different colors. And uh, so that you may see, the, the, that you may actually take a look at yourselves and see the wisdom in it, actually, rather than differentiating yourselves. So, of course, it does exist. Uh, you know, we, let's not deny the human beings have that inclination of to what he is. And he thinks he's better than anything else that others are not. So even if you're, if you have in a certain perspective, and certain things are going well in your direction, and the lesser fortunate might have suffered certain beliefs or certain color of skin, you might think then you are actually definitely superior, and God loves you better. That that always been the case actually. Unfortunately, that existed throughout the history of mankind, even in the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In the Arabian Peninsula, it was littered on it. So the, the, the focus, inshallah, today we're going to try to focus is uh, the Islamic perspective of how Islam dealt racism and get rid of it, obviously. That's the topic mainly we try to, uh, inshallah, elaborate. And unfortunately, to the people who lost lives, uh, I was living in South Africa. So 
and, 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 and living in South Africa, you would definitely have a good knowledge of racism, obviously. Uh, that's where it was the worst of in its, in its lifestyle. And you will see it in your workplace, you will see it in your traveling, you will still see remnants of it because I grew up there in South Africa. So of course, racism had a, had a picture then uh, to, to, to see because it lasted into the 21st century. It's not something that is really, really, it's old school and it's in the 90s, black and white, uh, the TV, you can't tell. It was 1994 when South Africa got rid of apartheid. And in other forms today, it exists as well. It's not about color as well. It exists in the form of religion as well today, as Muslims are minority in some countries and they face persecution. And that itself entails as actually uh, racism. China predominantly uh, oppresses Muslims because they think they're better. They think they, they're backwarded and th that becomes itself. And that really one of the things that really, you know, um, hurts most is it can be form of, of, of course, ideology. It can be form of a skin color and it takes many shapes actually definitely in, 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 in discriminating someone because he's a lesser for you and he depends on you. That's, that's one of the biggest forms. And when that happens is the superior one who thinks he's superior in that sense, then of course oppresses the others. Where Islam, when it was the minority, let's say in Arabian Peninsula and uh, in the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, of course, when it became predominant, I mean, that's where you see the difference of it. Did it become oppressive or it became actually equalize everything? So this yeah. is something that we're going to have to look at it in that sense as well. Because if somebody were to say the blacks today are the ones that's been oppressed in America, whether they're the leaders, then how they would have acted, put them in the position of the others who have the authority over them today. So similarly, then the South African story was when Mandela took over and the blacks were the leaders in the country then that's where you show your real colors, where, you, where your real color stands is when you become superior or others, how you act upon, then, then that shows your character as well, in yeah. that sense, inshallah. Mashallah. Yes, Brother Ahmed, what's your take on this? Where does the, what's the root cause of, um, you think, people with, who have this idea of discrimination and uh, you know, who think that they are better than others, just basically on the... Uh, on the uh, based on the color of the skin. I, I would like first to mention uh, there is uh, an uh, old Arabic saying statement that the, the Arab they are used to say, "Ramatni uh, That's the, the translation for this one means that uh, she deposited her own defect on me, and then she escaped. She ran away. Okay. Like someone, he have something, okay, that it's uh, really, it's, it's uh, uh, something that it's really bad thing on him. And then he will come to the other people that they are free from this thing. And they are going to tell him, you have such and such and such and such, which is already in him. And then he will just run. He, he will not wait even to, for the other one to defend himself. And that's actually what's happening with those nowadays. Uh, they are naming themselves the civilized uh, population, the civilized nations. We, they are always uh, accusing the Muslim society being uh, racist, being such and such things, and being terrorist, whatever they are going to say. And if you are going to look deeply in, in, in this society, you don't even know to, to look deeply because it's coming, it's appearing in such like, like nowadays, nowadays situations. Okay. Uh, this racism, uh, I, in, in, in my own opinion, it have roots. The roots uh, are coming back to both biblical roots. Okay, it's 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 in, in the Bible that the people because they, 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 these nowadays uh, civilized population populations they are either Christian they are belonging to Christianity or they are atheists. The 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 racism have biblical roots and atheist roots also related to atheism also. In the Bible, it's it's mentioned there in the Bible, they are claiming that God told the, the sons of uh, Prophet Noah, peace be upon him, that he will make one of them, uh, the dark-skinned one, he will make his uh, his uh, children uh, slaves to the other, uh, to the other, uh, the other sons of Noah. So according to wow. that statement, that they are, they are, they are referring it to, to God, that uh, this is how God what what God wants. So how God wants it to be. Yeah. Because, yes. So they don't have any kind of being guilty here because they are just doing it like how God wanted to be. Okay. 
So they don't feel any kind of, or if, if they are doing something wrong. This is the, 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 the biblical roots. And when it comes to atheism, the, nowadays atheists, they are believing that human being, they are in, uh, on continuous evolution, starting from the, the, the first cell until the nowadays. But they are looking to the people with dark skin, like they are, they are in the lowest uh, step of the, of the evolution. And the white skinned people, they are in the highest one. So they are yeah. thinking, okay, we, we have the right to have this racism against them because we are more civilized. We are more, you know, we are in the highest degree of the evolution. Uh, so uh, we don't have anything. It, it, it's, not, it's not bad. It's, according to them, of course, Alhamdulillah, this is not from the, the, the Islamic religion. When we, when we come to that accusation, accusing of us, we, we can look at the, the, the first, you know, the, the, from the first day of Islam, that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his followers, they were from different colors, different uh, nations, different places, and there is no discrimination amongst them. Well, I know that we will come to this point in details later on, inshallah, it's in there, but I'm just giving a general idea about the, 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 yeah. the, the, the roots of, of racism, and then inshallah, we will come to this later. Mashallah. No, it's it's amazing that you pointed out uh, uh, the two problems that they have. Uh, um, and yeah, you're right. Uh, apart from um, uh, like biblical references that you give, uh, like even even in the New Testament, uh, Jesus has supposed to have come for only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He said, don't go in, into the house of the, anyone else. Don't go into the Gentiles. Only go to the, the lost sheep of the house of Israel, which means uh, you know, basically the Jews. So there is kind of, a, you know, saying that I've only come for some people and not for others, then there, there's kind of, a, you know, saying, but uh, like you rightly said, we can speak about it later on that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he came for the whole humanity and he, and he bring every, uh, brought everyone together. And the fact that you mentioned the atheists as well, and it's very, uh, it's amazing because if you, if, even if you read Darwinism, uh, Darwin said the exact same thing. That, you know that uh, that uh, the lowest form of uh, the human beings they are very close to the apes and then as as you see, see the chart that has been presented in in his uh, writings that which me, it, it has the, the white man on the top and then everyone else you know it categorizing everything and this lead this led to the the fact that they went out and they you know enslaved people and they they, they, they brought them back and they make them work work like you know uh, like animals uh, be, uh, following this idea that they can manipulate anyone, any any other race because they think that they were superior. And he, it was, I was reading uh, one of his small articles as well and one of his books, he said that, uh, you know, the origin of man or uh, um, something like, I think it was the same name for, for the book. And he says that, uh, that it's in near future, all these civilized nation will exterminate all the other races in the world. You know, so this is like, like if you're if you're following Darwinism and his ideology, if you see a pup, a, 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 someone of a color being killed or being, you know, uh, tortured, then you should be thinking, oh, this is the fulfillment of the prophecy, because they think that Darwin is their prophet, you know, so they, they shouldn't be uh, scared about it, or they shouldn't be ashamed about it, because it's manifesting in front of their eyes. So, but uh, but the fact that it's it all started now, and I want to bring it to a, a religious perspective into this, that the race, the racism or discrimination didn't start with uh, with the human beings among themselves. It started off way before, and you know what I'm pointing towards, uh, pointing to uh, at this time. So, uh, Brother Muhammad, I would like you to take uh, a few minutes to maybe elaborate on, on what, what went on, the first discrimination that happened after the creation of man and uh, the root cause of what I wanted to get to the, uh, uh, the fact, you know, some type of racism that people have is because of the arrogance. So what was that arrogance? Yeah, um, it's, it's subhanAllah, it's, 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 it's embedded into the, 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 the biblical teachings. You find it, especially in Islamic teaching theologically, um, the first rebeller, the first racist was Satan himself, actually. As, as Allah created mankind, if you read the Quran, as Allah created mankind and he placed 
every creation of him, which was the angels at the time, and including the jinn kinds, the two creatures that Allah created for subservience. So the angels, Allah created them to be always obedient. So they will never be disobedient to Allah. But the other race, the other creature that Allah created was the jinn kind. Uh, Satan, who is from the jinn kind, Allah asked everyone who was among in that company, including the, the, the jinn kind, to show a respect to Adam that Allah created. As Adam was created from a clay, and the angels were created from light, and the jinn kind is created fire. And that's when he firstly came up to show his arrogance, because the deep root of racism, and you think you're better than someone, that's why Islam means submissive to God. It's to eradicate your arrogance, and then only you can truly become a good Muslim eventually. And then because he believes in Allah, Satan, the time, Iblis is his name, and he believes in Allah and he follows his guidance, then he wasn't actually protected of from disobedience to Allah leads to arrogance. And when it becomes arrogance, then that's when he show his racism. So when Allah ordered him to show respect the creature that Allah created, which is human beings, he says, how can I show respect, a, a prostration of respect to a creature that you made out of mud when you made me from light? So I'm better. So that when you made me out of fire, so he, well, him saying fire is better. I don't know, really. You know, I, I say the clay is more beneficial than fire. Fire destroys. Clay produces actually good food. So, yeah. so he. But actually, some of the some of the scholars, some 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 scholars say that the mud is very stat, like it stays on the ground while fire goes up. So it's, it's still, a, you know, it's a destructive. It's a destructive yeah. nature when he actually. Yeah. But the reason he's saying is it's dirt. You know, yeah. we will go to the graveyards and we'll all face the dirt anyway. Yeah. But the thing is, you know, he's actually, the, the, the reason he's pointing out is because it's dirt and we wash away where it reaches. So that's like, ew, you know, it's something that we <laughs> look away. Yeah. So the reality is, it's arrogance is embedded within in the human being because anyone who sees himself is better has been touched by a bit of that, you know, that arrogance that shaitan himself was exposed to. And him being disobedient to Allah, that's exactly what he did. He said, I'm better than this. So why will I obey you in telling me what to do? So it is actually an arrogance of, of us in our part when we discriminate different color that Allah created. You know, it's not that I'm better than the creation of Allah. So if I look down in someone that actually that Allah created, it's actually a disobedience to Allah. It's same showing the same thing, the nature that Shaitan himself showed when he, Allah, ordered him to respect him. You know, Allah did not tell him to worship this. He told him to respect it. So if you can't respect your fellow human being, you have a bit of shaitan in you. That's what Allah ordered him. And then later on, the severity of that just came out. It reached to severity where he, where he became disobedient to Allah. And when he did that, that he went far away from the belief of Allah. And he actually promised Allah that even if you take me to hellfire, I will not listen to you. So that's how far I took him. So he says, I'll bring them with me. I'll bring them to hellfire with me. All his children. So that's how much animosity and arrogance that it creates when you are think you're better than anything else. So it is, it is a disease of the heart as well. It's not a disease of any such. Because I remember once I was working in South Africa and one of my managers happened to be those who don't like this, you know, unfortunately. And I'm exposed to this. It's so, it's so raw in South Africa. Don't worry, if you ever go and back in, you know, when things, people still have that thing in them, you know, they, they can't, it's not quickly disappears. It's actually, it's investors in the heart. No matter sometimes, how, <laughs> sometimes there is a wow factor, you know, brother Muhammad. So yes. like, wow, that was, that was racist, man. I know, it, it, wow. but, you know, but, but in South Africa, there's yeah. nothing wow about it, really. It's yeah. so out there, like literally, it's yeah. out there, <laughs> it's sticking out. And, and, and so when you face, like it, it becomes funny. So much in your face. Exactly, and and yeah. Subhanallah, me being from South Africa, uh, from Somalia originally, it just yeah. never really occurred to me that you would see human beings thinking this way at all. Like. Yeah. And I and I remember I was I'm, I'm welding, and then a scratch came out in my body, and you know I start to bleed a little bit, and I and he and and, and I remember he says, "Oh, you're still red inside," and I was like, and I didn't caught immediately what he means. You know, you you're red. Oh, your skin. So he's showing. My meat inside is red. That's all he said. It. <laughs> and then later on, I got, and I got, a, I, I never thought of anything. It just, it just brushed over me. A while it hit me back. Oh, <laughs> and I go back to him. Really, I'm that kind of person. Really, I don't take it quickly. The answers. And I go back to him. What do you mean my skin is red? I just asked him. Really, and he says, 
Oh yeah, but but I thought black is that deep, really. <laughs> wow. And it was just, and I and I just told him, maybe you should just peel that little bit. You think it's actually different from me? It looks exactly the same inside. I just try to brush it away. So that's yeah. that's why it is really it infests the heart. No matter how much you think systematically, like South Africa thought systematically is eradicated, even though it's gone to the other extreme now, unfortunately, South Africa, the blacks are, are doing the opposite of what the whites were doing. Because yeah. when you were given, when Mandela is gone and everything, things are going bad at the sense. Now yeah. the farmers has been killed or, you know, dispossessed and all this. But that's an unfortunate story. But the reality of it though, even it is the disease of the heart, as you can see, even if it's gone, if people are equal opportunity, working at the same place, having the same level, you will always think, you know, these are the people that we never really have to have any say with it. Like literally, you know, it moves to that level that you don't want to think for them as, as they are not an equal human being at all, that you think you know better. So yeah. it, imagine sometimes you can, you can see in the household of a family, uh, you know, you'll see a child doing something and he's building blocks. Dad becomes a little bit irritated sometimes. He thinks he can do faster than him. So that's what happens. That superiority goes deep and deep. So as you think, this race is so backward and, and so backward that you can do better than them. And therefore, you'll see yourself as a sublime. Even if you're doing the most messiest thing, because then your systems that you create to make sure that this existed, like in South Africa, there were systems created for the party to exist. The education level has existed you know, the policing, the military, the thing we're going so deep. So obviously shaitan will create those sins to make you more arrogant. And it starts with you being just discriminating human beings first. Then of course, everything else becomes okay. Yeah, part of monkey. If you agree that, then that means you're saying God did not create the human beings. You're actually saying evolution agrees to it. Yes. So all that, then the systems allowed for people to vest in. And the cure, of course, is only submitting to God, which is Islam. There is no other religion. Like you already mentioned Christianity. Like you find a quote where Jesus says, actually, I, actually, I was listening to Ahmadida the other day. And he says, oh, we give them to the crumbs of the blessing. We don't give them. They're like the dogs. Why would you want to yeah. feed the dogs? See, yes. it, it's because the religion of God was lost its way as well. So then this was made a way of life. Like when the, king, when, when the king of Belgium went to Africa, they have to change the Christianity for the Africans, even though they want to preach them. It has to be made the man who's bringing the religion is more superior. Even if you see it in the, in the, in the, in the figures of the religion of Christianity, it has to stay within the white frame to make sure that no one else. It, it took ages when a black man can be really white irreverent. Yeah, white black man. man white man lived in. Yes, that's it. That's it. Obviously. What's that, that, Brother Ahmed? What did you say? They are, all, they are used to name it the white man burden is to make those people more civilized, burden. more than everything. Yes. 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 And it has to be evilized and made of, even though they want to give the religion of God to the Africans, it was still made that, you know, the Belgians are still a higher superior. And, and of course, of course, like the Israelites are thinking themselves now that we're better. Like that's why yeah. Christianity, even the Christian, forget even Christianity aside, even Judaism, is a sense of actually a form of racism because they think they're better than everyone human beings. They think they're the yeah. children of God. So they see everyone else as like nothing, even though they might side with one side rather than the Muslim side, obviously. But still they see the others, of course, they're superior to it. They think they're godly of themselves. So therefore they, that's, that's what leads into religiously gain away from the way of God. So the only cure for that obviously is submit to God. And by you being submit, you become humble. And you know only God gave those colors just so that you may appreciate the creation of Allah and the beauty of it. It, it brings into, if there was no different colors of human beings, you wouldn't get mixed colored children. Like they're beautiful, isn't they? <laughs> Very good, mashallah. Yes, brother, uh, brother Ahmed, I would like to take, uh, I'd like to take uh, your take on this about, uh, you know, this arrogance and maybe you can share some light on how destructive it is. And obviously like brother Muhammad said, it originated with the first, dis, uh, you know, discrimination of uh, of uh, shaitan of iblis to to Adam, peace be upon him. So how 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 you know how destructive is it? And uh, you know any 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 um, um, you know uh, how can you say honey disadvantages or maybe you can tell us about the uh, you know the sickness that it can bring to person. Uh, the 
I, I will start by saying the difference between the sin of Adam and the sin of Satan. Because both of yes. them made sin against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, against God. Uh, but the difference between this one and this one, that Adam, when he made his sin, he repented to Allah. Allah taught him how to make repentance to forgiveness. Then when he did this, Allah accepted it from him, and then he came back, and then he became close to Allah again, like he was before, more, maybe more better. But the, on the opposite side, when the Satan made his sin, he felt arrogant. He, he, he made the, the he, he was arrogant at the first thing by refusing to uh, uh, bow down to Adam according to the order of Allah. And then he feel arrogant again to uh, uh, rebound to Allah and ask for forgiveness. So he, he insisted in, on, in, on the sin that he made. And he, he also, the, the, arrogance of, uh, uh, the arrogance of him uh, not bowing down to Adam is not related to arrogance against Adam himself only. He feel arrogance against Adam but he feels also arrogant against the order of God. You know, he's not only rejecting yes. to bow down to Adam. Now he's saying to God, just you know, just like like he's saying to God, "Oh God, just maybe you really cannot recognize the, the situation here." Okay, I, I am made of fire, and then Adam is made of clay. I'm much better than him. He's just like explaining the things to God. So he's telling him, "God, you know, situation is is really very clear. I am better than him. Why are you asking me to?" So. The arrogance, how much destructive it is, it, it, the first thing, it, it leads the shaitan being out of the, the, the heaven, of the paradise. Allah uh, uh, bring, brought him out of, of the paradise. And then uh, when the shaitan is out, like what Brother Muhammad mentioned earlier, he, uh, he, he, he said to Allah that he's going to bring all the, the, the sons of Adam together with him to the hellfire. He, he, he knew that he's, he's going to end in the hellfire anyway. So he's, he, he want to bring as much as uh, the, the sons of Adam because he, he hate them. He, he know that they are, according to his own thinking, that they are the reason for him to be in, uh, out of the paradise. So he want to bring as much of them together. And from the first few days of humanity on the earth, after Adam come to earth, the Satan started to... Uh, put that seed of arrogance amongst the sons of Adam. And he, uh, he, he, he uh, actually, he, he succeeded doing this. Uh, we know, according to Islam, when, uh, in the Quran, it's mentioned, uh, in akramakum Allah said yeah. in the Quran, the most honorable to decide or to, to Allah from amongst you is those who is more pious. If you are more pious, then you are more close to Allah. And that's also same when, when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was asked what the, who, who is the most honorable to the of God. He said, Akramuhum Atkahum. Those are most pious. And then uh, I, I'm, I'm coming now to this, the sons of Adam to explain, but I am explaining this one. Uh, these two sons of Adam, Abel, uh, Abel and Cable, when, when they have this kind of argument against, uh, between each other and then they made uh, a sacrifice to Allah Okay, different kind of sacrifice. And then Allah accepted it from one of them and rejected from the other one because according to Allah and Allah knows best that this one is more pious. So he accepted. And then the other one that his sacrifice being rejected, he, he cannot really accept that his brother is more What was the solution? Okay, just I'm going to kill him. So he... he Yes. The, 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 the first uh, be, being killed as, as a result of racism in, uh, from a human being was the son of Adam himself. His own, son, his own brother killed him because he, he cannot accept that some other one will be more close to Allah. So he followed the steps of, of, of the Satan. Okay? And that, unfortunately, was you know it's it's been uh, transmitted from generation to generation amongst human being until we are, until the our decision yeah very good mashallah so and and one of the things that uh, that shaitan actually said was in, instead of acknowledging his own mistake he blamed allah he's saying you got me in the wrong Yes. So this is a very important trait that even in present in our times that even after maybe 
if someone does a mistake or if he's maybe if he's racist towards someone when they when people you know approach him and saying what are you doing this is not they start blaming other people they start blaming the victim and saying no 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 he 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 should have you know he we um, they the gangsters they the they the robbers yeah. they the ro- exactly. they the gangsters, the gangsters. <laughs> they're killing themselves and you know all start, side, any type of excuse to you know uh, uh, instead of acknowledging their own own uh, mistake they start blaming the victims and everyone who's asking them to uh, you know repent or uh, acknowledge that they had made a mistake yes but ali would you, what would you uh, any experiences with this type of arrogance and how how can it be destructive brother ali from uh, you know what, what would just lesson what would you be uh, what lessons would you think you take from this story of adam uh, and shaitan iblis so i mean indeed uh, i mean the fact that uh, god has mentioned this story um, in uh, in his book is uh, is an indication many times many times uh, yes yeah is an indication itself that you know this is a story that is very important for for the mankind in its um, in its uh, you know um, process of getting to the truth yes now obviously we see the at the crux of the story is um, adam uh, which 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 allah created who allah created and then shaitan so shaitan as uh, the brothers have already uh, said that you know he he's created from uh, from from fire and when adam was created from uh, from clay you know it was uh, for him like an act of um, kind of you know lowering his stature for for the sake of uh, you know for for bow- bowing down but obviously um, you know at the, at the center of all of this is the fact that you know what he ignored was that this is a command from god um, you know as brother ahmed said that you know he was like telling god that you know i know better than you uh, you know why yes. are you asking me to do something that you know doesn't make sense um so yeah. obviously th- this kind of uh, you know uh, goes into mankind as well you know where we see people who think that they are in one way or another better than others and uh, as we know you know uh, uh, that everybody is equal in the in the sense of uh, you know being a human and being from the same roots i mean even if people who who are from scientific background mm-hmm. and they don't believe at this point in 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 god and god creating mankind you know they agree that you know the origins of mankind can be traced back to one male and female from 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 africa as well so uh, you know if, even from that perspective you see that you know um, the concept of somebody being superior mm-hmm. than the other doesn't make sense i mean and i would uh, just um, go more into this point a bit that um, you know the the racism that um, uh, in 1800s was kind of uh, perpetuated by the the circles of science is also very very mind boggling in the sense yes. that you know there were studies that you know supposedly mm-hmm. the scientists try to carry out um where they would kind of evaluate the skull size of people from uh, you know different skin colors yes. and at the end they, they try to establish yeah. that you know the the skin color uh, the white skin color has uh, more intelligence and more uh, uh, you know the, the the more right to be kind of at the top the top of the the ladder so you know you see this in the scientific circles as well and Uh, in the 1800s where you know it wasn't very um, you know very cl- uh, very cloaked it was very obvious uh, maybe not at that time but you know anybody who sees that uh, those statements from from those scientists would say you know it's blatant racism um, but you know there's a subtle kind of racism we see uh, from uh, you know w- w- the people we call them new new atheists uh, or new atheism where um, you know they uh, attack uh, generally people of faith and specifically you know muslims where um, they kind of have some conclusions about them um, and you know all the sci- uh, scientific and cultural advancements of you know muslims are ignored and you know uh, based on the look uh, and a particular stereotype all the muslims are labeled into one uh, one category and this um, you know leads to kind of islamophobic statements that you hear in the media um and, and obviously all these uh, islamophobes they try to justify their uh, stances based on these statements of these so called scientists where, where where they they supposedly uh, try and tell people that how 
people from Muslim backgrounds are not, uh, you know, uh, at the equal footing as, you know, people of the scientific enlightenment uh, of the West. Um, so, I mean, um, coming back to the point of arrogance, um, we know from our Prophet Muhammad wasalam, where he said in the hadith that uh, a person who has a, uh, who has an atom's weight of arrogance will not enter paradise. And in the same hadith, he explained what does it mean to be arrogant? And he said uh, that, you know, arrogance means to to reject the truth and to look down upon people. So, yes. I, mean, uh, I mean, before we even get into the, the uh, grievous sin of um, being racist, you know, uh, the, the, the root of racism, which lies in the arrogance, I mean, Islam has tried to kind of cut that root, you know, by not letting people be arrogant uh, and not letting people look down upon the others, no matter what their stature is, no matter what their skin color is, no matter what their, uh, you know, scientific educational qualifications are. In the eyes of God, um, everybody is the same and everybody is, uh, you know, at the equal footing. MashaAllah, Zakla Khair. And uh, just the way you mentioned, you know, when, when people, you know, Michelangelo, uh, I, I, and, and it's really interesting about him that by the, when, when he was living, he was looking up to the Muslims. Like he was, it was dark ages and when Muslims were doing all the advancements, writing the books in science and, you know, they're, they're advancing. They were, they were living in dark ages and Michelangelo, who is, you know, was a really, really famous for his uh, paintings and sculptures. And paintings, yeah. uh, in, in, in his times, all the people around him, they used to have like, they were, they were not known for having beards or anything like that. They used to be such clean shaved and, you know, looking like, uh, you know, very, very, um, like woman like <laughs> and they didn't use used to have that but himself i have a picture of him look he was <laughs> he was he was looking up to the muslims and he because he was so intelligent he you know like th this is what you feel like like you i want to be like them kind of uh, situation where unfortunately people in in the muslim community as well like you know they want to be like someone else so they so they want they lose ident their identity in the process but look at him he wanted to do the same he wanted to look like the people who were at the top of advancements and and um, you know um, uh, scientific discoveries and all these things so um, mashallah all of you mentioned very very briefly very very you know important points about uh, the arrogance that people have and and how did it originate so now we come to the solution part Everyone claims that, you know, if you do the X, Y, and Z, this will remove, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, certain problems from the society, racism being one of them. And, and they give their own ideas. But this is not actually, you know, um, something that can be removed uh, by, by, before taking certain steps. So I'd like to know from you guys, you know, what is the best way? What is the best system that we can use to eliminate this disease of racism from the society, you know, entirely. Brother Muhammad. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Is, is, is it my network that's bad? Because you're all frozen on me actually for a few minutes every time that you guys are talking. Is it only my side, is it? No, yeah, I, 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 we can hear you perfectly. Alhamdulillah, okay. You're too fast for us, brother. <laughs> Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. I just, just, just look at it, so each one of you froze a few seconds for me each time, Alhamdulillah. So the thing is, I thought it was actually, yeah, yes. it, it, you know, it's true. It's in everywhere. You know, it's an epidemic. It's in, it's in, in Muslims. It's in, it's in non-Muslims. And the solution is Islam. And we were given, you know, the best solution that Allah gave to cure the hearts of Muslims, those who submit to him. You won't find it anywhere else but the actual ritualistic point of view of prayer that we pray to him every day to Allah. That is where... The, the, the saddle lays in. One of the, one of the fundamental things, uh, going back to Brother Didat again explaining this, he said it is the five daily prayers that Allah gave us to pray. It is the source cure of actually of the fundamental racism. That's why he said it. And in, in his words, he says, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in the hadith that when we praying, we Muslims should be shoulder to shoulder standing each other. I, I didn't say the churches or anywhere else. You'll be sitting on chairs and everybody can take their own steps. At this moment, we're doing the two, you know, the two meter. I don't agree with the people who's praying in the mosques, actually, that bad of distance, actually. If you can't do it, pray at home. It's, it's an actually alternation. But rather than that, this, the prayer itself, it creates 
that you know there is no one different all of you are a creation of Allah and you should put shoulder to shoulder standing facing the only creator the supreme the only one that's supreme you know the only supreme that's ever no one else is superior and all of you are subservient to him and you submit to him and in the prayer we stand ankle to ankle and shoulder to shoulder so that no one else has any superiority to one another and in that hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said you should not let shaitan come in between you and i yes. have seen brother didad explaining saying no he didn't mean a physical shaitan coming in between you and this is now in his own explanation he says it's the arrogance between you you're better than yes. i am i'm better than you my yeah. socks is cleaner than yours and you're no i'm different class than you the trait of the trait of uh, devil. whether you king or queen is yeah yeah the trade of devil that's what he was getting rid of it he said the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that you're all equal so put your shoulders together and submit to god and this is the solution to mankind if you go to judaism it's only saved for judaism you'll be disappointed you can never be a jew and if you go to christianity you find the same thing even though it's given to it that jesus was only sent to who israel so that you won't find it there and the only religion that actually and the only system not only religion the only system that eradicates racism is by submitting to god and see everyone else as equal as you and as submissive to god i'm not saying muslims are safe from it i'm not saying all white people is bad i have brothers tons of them who are reverts are muslims who are tons who are not non muslims as well who are not racist but the reality is the root cause of this the solution to it is is to to sub, to submit to god and be subservient and this is where the only solution to mankind is by submitting to their god and see everyone else the same but if we make the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as equal to god what happens to his nation they become superior as well so imagine yeah. that polytheism creates actually racism so if you make the jews who is jesus was born from it as actually he himself is equal to god then his people becomes superior i remember i was speaking to an irish man who was actually explaining to islam to him and he is actually born again and he was saying no 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 jews are special they're going to come back when they come back they'll be in their position sitting next to god and i was like come on now i hope you do not buy into this ideology they wrote these things in their hands i hope they yeah. didn't make you fool into it i just tell him don't be falling into this they'll never be really equal to god no one is equal to god we were all subservient to God let's just come down and submit so even if Jesus was born out of Judea he never became superior to mankind he he submitted to God he sit with people he ate with people if you read the biblical teachings you find the same so what about the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam which is the solution to mankind he never 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 you know you, they could never never brought him out from the people the society he was in imagine this all his companions but they could see that there is the importance man why how they respected him you know that's the, that's the supreme leader for us as the muslims and when we look into humanity we look into the companions how they acted about and in the companions there's so much you can tell and i'm going to leave for the rest of the brothers to explain the beauty that islam brought to show the difference of classes how the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam dealt and get out of this disease even though we muslims are falling into it as well but how he eradicated inshallah mashallah Zakla khair uh, brother ahmed would you like to shed some light on on how we can solve this problem and maybe some examples from our tradition uh, yes uh, just before i will come to this one I, i need to say that when we are defending when we are defending islam uh, that uh, there is no racism in islam we are not defending the muslims okay Absolutely. because we, we, we need to admit that racism uh, like what brother muhammad just mentioned also it's existing even in muslim countries oh and yes definitely among yes. Uh, many, many muslim populations you will find in in some muslim countries until now the tribalism uh, you, you know tribalism is not rejected in itself in islam but the like you know some some tribes they are refusing that the, the, their, uh, their their daughters will marry from the men of the other people and the, the, they are not refusing the other thing like they mean they are going to get married from other tribes it's okay for them but when it comes to the reverse they are not they are not taking this one so uh, and also there is many others there is you know you'll find some some muslim countries they are feeling that they are more superior than the other one because they are they have much money or they are belonging to such and such thing in, in different different ways okay yeah. 
So the the uh, yeah, we like to make a distinction between the Muslims and Islam. The religion. Religion. Yes. Yeah, the religion he, of Islam. Yeah. He, 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 here we come to how we are going to treat this one. How we are going to manage this? To manage this one is by going back to the guidance of Allah. Uh, when 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 uh, the like what Brother Muhammad also mentioned that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he ordered the people uh, to feel quiet. No superiority for for uh, you know Arab or non or non Arab or uh, white to other color or to red to white or any any two people from different colors except by uh, by being biased to Allah being more close to if if we we we, we need like what what Muhammad also mentioned we need to feel that we are slaves okay and we are slaves to Allah only, not, not slave to anyone else. And a slave, the slave have no right to be arrogant. If you feel that you are a slave, you're yes. not feeling arrogant because you, you are a slave. Okay, sorry. But you are a slave to the only one, the only one true master, the one, the only one who have the right to be arrogant, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. So if you feel this one, you'll not feel arrogant. And also by knowing that all of us we are coming to one origin. We are coming from a single man and single woman, the same father and the same mother, okay? So we are belonging to this man and woman. So we, there is no one that who is higher than the other one, except by being biased to Allah, like what Allah mentioned in the Quran and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned in, in, in the Sunnah. And also we need to go, go back a little more before Adam. Adam, coming from where? From ash, okay? So all of us are coming from ash, the same ash, okay? And all of us will come back to the ash again, okay? Yes. When we are going to be buried in the ground, there will maybe no, no difference between the ash that's coming from this body and the ash that's coming from this body, okay? If you are going to open the grave for this one after a few weeks and the grave for this one, you'll not be able to differentiate. They are going to look the same. So yes. here, if, if, if you are going to end up in this way, so why? Why to feel it? SubhanAllah, there is no way that you are going to feel except, you know, even even if you are going to do more religious uh, affairs to become more pious to Allah, you cannot also feel superior because only Allah knows if you are really sincere or no. Doing <laughs> things good, it's, it's making you close to Allah, but only Allah knows. You don't know. And uh, when the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked about taqwa, bias, he said, taqwa and he pointed to, to his chest. Okay. And what's hidden here, only Allah knows. Even us, we cannot really know. You know? Yeah. It's only Allah. True. Allah knows who's, if, you, if you are really doing good things sincerely, and then Allah will accept it and made you put, put you in, in the higher degree of piety or no so you don't you, you, doing things good doesn't make you superior between human beings it makes you superior at the side of allah and only allah thank you very much yes brother brother ali there was an amazing uh, elaboration by brother ahmed would you like to uh, elaborate on something uh, about how can we get rid of this arrogance the best system of obviously the brother to explain any any examples from uh, from our past, our traditions that can be helpful for people to listen and, and you know reflect upon? Yeah, of course, uh, of course. I mean, um, as the brothers have already pointed out that Islam, um, you know, um, as a system, um, and anyways, I mean, the message of Islam was at a time when, uh, you know, the, the, the region, uh, uh, the, the Arabian region, it was indulged in kind of worse um, kind of tribalism and you know, uh, racism of its time. Uh, you know, slavery was something that was very, very common. Um, so, I mean, the message of Islam, um, it came, and, uh, you know, we, we see in Quran where God says uh, that, you know, Ya ayyuhal nasu inna khalaqnakum min dhakarim wa untha wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qabaila li ta'arafu. Um, and the same ayah at the end, inna karamakum inda Allah yatqakum. Um, that God says that, you know, Oh, mankind and this is addressing all of the mankind you know 
God is not just talking to you know the Muslims or those people who believe. Um, yeah. And God is saying that you know we we have created you from a man and a woman, so the, you know the, this is an indication, and uh, you know the, the the it's pointing to the fact that you know we all have same origin, and you know God then further goes on to give the reason of why he he kind of separated us into uh, you know uh, tribes and uh, you know some some subdivisions that so that um, uh, we, we, we get to know each other and it's, uh, you know, easier for us to identify, you know, it's a, it's a mark of an identity, but it's not a mark of, you know, uh, or, or a license to discriminate or a license to say one person or one, one tribe or one uh, race is superior than the other. And uh, as the brothers have mentioned again and again that, you know, God says in that the one who is best in the sight of Allah is the one who is, who is the most pious. And, uh, you know, uh, re-emphasizing the point that Brother Ahmed mentioned that piousness or taqwa is something that is hidden. So, you know, that, that eliminates that uh, element of somebody coming to you and saying, hey, I'm more pious than you and I'm superior than you. No, it, it, because, you know, it's something hidden. So nobody can come and say um, that, you know, I'm more pious than you because this is between you and Allah. Uh, so, you know, for all the practical reasons, everybody on the face of earth is equal, is the same. And that is the core message of Islam. Uh, and, and further on, you know, uh, God says that he created people uh, with different color and different, uh, um, yeah, you know, languages. To, so this is, an, uh, this is a sign from him. Um, and all of these things point um, back to the fact that, you know, we only have one God, um, one, one religion that is the one way to him. And one, one humankind, uh, one race, you know, there's no real distinction uh, when it comes to worshiping the, worshiping the one and true God. Um, and obviously going back to the, to the history, um, I mean, uh, when Islam came, uh, you know, uh, I mean, it, it just wasn't something that was theoretical, that was just, you know, um, words. Uh, you know, we have the, the uh, examples from the companions of the prophet and the famous, most famous, companion of uh, Prophet Ali Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was uh, Bilal, who was, uh, who was a black slave at, the, uh, at that time. And, you know, when he became Muslim, you know, through Islam, uh, Allah elevated him to a position and Prophet Muhammad Alaihi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he made him uh, the, the first Muaddin or the caller to, to the prayers in Islam. And this is, I mean, this is a big honor. Uh, and, you know, there were so many other companions um, that Prophet uh, had who were from the same tribe as he was, who were, who were from the same um, kind of race as he was. But instead of that, he chose uh, a, a black person who was uh, formerly a slave to you know, do, do this job and to you know, call people to, you know, to the prayers. Um, and obviously we, we, we have um, example of um, Um Ayman, um, you know, the, the, the slave of uh, Prophet Alaihissalam's parents, um, who was who Prophet Alaihissalam called her as uh, you know his mother uh, 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 at multiple occasions. So you know the 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 love and reverence that Prophet Alaihissalam showed towards her. Um, once again, you know it's it showed the people of that time that you know. Islam is the religion that is that has come to eradicate, eradicate all the differences. It has come to kind of uh, you know equalize and balance that 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 scale. Um, and the final example I just want to quickly point out uh, of um, of Osama Osama ibn Zaid, the 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 seventeen year old who Prophet ﷺ made commander of the army of Muslim army uh, that had um, companions as uh, you know mighty and as big as. Uh, the, the caliphs that came after the death of the prophet. So Abu Bakr was amongst them. Uh, Umar ibn Khattab, uh, ibn, uh, Umar ibn Khattab was, was there. Ali ibn Abi Talib was there in the same army. But Prophet Ali wasalam, chose Usama, whose mother was uh, Um Ayman, uh, uh, the, 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 the black slave. Uh, 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 and, uh, you know, he was uh, leading that army, uh, despite that army having people who are more closely associated to the Prophet in terms of, you know, blood relation, in terms of the same tribe, in terms of the, the same area. But that did not matter at all, you know. And the fact is that during the time of Abu Bakr, um, you know, people actually complained uh, to, to the Khalifa that, you know, Osama, why is he 
you know, they started making noise. But they did not make noise because he was a black person. They made noise because he was very young. So it, it shows that the priorities, you know, that, yeah. uh, you know. <laughs> that the, the sense of uh, his skin and color didn't even come it, to it, their it, mind. It wasn't yeah. even there that, you know, that yeah. had completely eradicated, that was completely gone. Um, and finally, uh, you know, in our recent example, we have uh, uh, Malcolm X, um, you know, and yes. I would just like point out that, you know, he was he, uh, a Muslim. And when he went to the pilgrimage uh, to Mecca and he came back to America, he was, he was very much amazed by, by the bond of brotherhood that he saw in Mecca. Because people, you know, um, uh, as Muslims, you are, um, uh, you are obligated to perform the pilgrimage to Mecca or to go to, uh, to make uh, this ritual we call Hajj once in your lifetime if you can afford it. And when people come to Mecca, it's people from all over the world, all kinds of backgrounds, all kinds of you know, skins, colors are there. So there is no distinction. Everybody is at the same place. And you know, if somebody has had an experience of looking at people who go for Hajj, you know, they would easily be able to tell you that you know, they wear the, 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 the garment of, uh, what do you call it, ihram, ihram, um, uh, which is basically two pieces of, you know, uh, white, white sheet of clothes. Um, and then again, you know, there is nothing really distinctive between the person who has come from a white background or a black background or a wealthy background or a poor background. They're all equal in the plains of, uh, of Arafah, for example, or in, in that state of Ihram when they're performing the Hajj. And Malcolm X actually said that when he went back to America that America needs to understand Islam because this is the one religion that erases from its society the race problem. So, um, I mean, um, he was yeah. a visionary and he was, a, he was way ahead of his time. Um, uh, and, you know, he was unjustly yes. killed. So I think uh, don't, uh, all I'm saying is don't take it from me, don't take from Muhammad or Ahmad or yourself, take it from Malcolm X that the solution to today's <laughs> race problem actually lies in the religion of Islam. And we ask Allah to guide people to Islam. I mean, yeah. I, mean, I think we should end on that note. Mashallah, it was a big, uh, very, very important topic that we had to cover. Mashallah, you, you handled it, you, all of you handled it really, really well. May Allah accept from all of us and make, um, you know, it's time for just to be, it's not okay, like we were, uh, I was hearing this lecture, it's not only okay to be non-racist, but it, we have to be anti-racism as well. We need to speak out against whoever is trying to, uh, you know, um, uh, justify this idea that they're better than others. We should be uh, in, uh, in, a, in a passionate way, try to convey them that this is not the right way and, you know, try to maybe... Um, share the message of Islam with them as well, because like we established today that the only religion and the only system, uh, we shouldn't, which is... Can I just add there yeah, on the note? Yes, yes, sure. say there, Brother yes. We shouldn't only feel for blacks. Let's let's look yeah. every broader, like the brothers of Muslims or in China. We should we should vote, we should yes. voice ourselves. Yes, yes, that's what I was trying uh, to say, yeah. I think it's just a little bit... Uh, Brother uh, Muhammad, you'll have to repeat yourself. I think you're uh, cutting off a little bit. Yeah, I was saying when the Jews were in the concentration camps, everybody voiced their languages up and yes. fought it. So yeah. why is anyone raising the voice for the people who are actually the Ura brother, the Ura brothers who are Muslims, that they prosecuted now in their millions? They're incarcerated, their religion stripped off, and nobody is fighting for them. So it shows the hypocrisy of human beings including yes. the, the way we produce our protesters are only, yeah. you know, somehow single guided as well. So we yeah. should let's let's voice for every oppressed person. And yeah. as long as there are someone oppressed, Islam should be the forefront of those who are gone against it. Just like the way that this blood brother was killed. And obviously we are against it, of course, any injustice yes. to anyone. Zakhla khair. Okay, we bring our uh, ep this episode to conclusion. Inshallah, Zakhla khair, everyone for attending. Mashallah, you made really, really amazing points. I hope the the viewers who are listening, or if the the voice reaches to anyone else in the future, maybe they can learn and look into Islam because, like I said, and how we established that it's the only system which eradicates the problem of racism and many other problems from the society. Zakhla khair, um, and we'll see each other next week with a new topic. 
Okay, inshallah, be ready. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadun la ilaha illa anta astaghfiru wa atubu alaykum. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.